We're not putting together an audience, church. We're putting together an army. Understand this. We're going to walk in confidently knowing that Jesus Christ is going with me. His power, His presence, that spirit that brought Him out of the grave. And I'm going to claim this part of God's creation for Him. What's up, Red Rocks? Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I want to take a moment to greet everybody that's watching online. Got to say what's up to everybody in Arvada, Brussels, Lake Hood. What's good? Uh, Littleton. And come on, can we please make some noise for our God Behind Bars locations? We love you guys. I think you, you picked a fantastic weekend to, to be in church, and uh, it's always an honor to be with you. I brought my wife with me this time, and, and uh, I actually have something I'd like to share with everybody uh, this weekend. If you could uh, keep this between us, it's a secret. Uh, we've not put this online on, on the gram or Facebook, nothing like that, but I want to tell y'all because I like y'all and you're some of my favorite people, so keep it between us. Me and my wife are expecting our second child. <laughs> And uh, we, are, we are having a, another boy. We got two bo- we're going to have two boys now, so we got a point guard. Now I got a shooting guard. This is good. God's moving in, in, in our family. Uh, one of the things that we're struggling with, though, just to be transparent with you, is that we can't figure out a name. And so if you could reach out to me via social media with some name suggestions, that would be great. One option we're thinking of is Sean. It's on the table, but not sure. Um, <laughs> Jethro, biblical name, Moses' father-in-law, in case you don't know who that is, nicknamed the Jets. Not really sticking right now. But um, if you have some great name ideas, that, that, would, be, that would be a blessing to us. I, I'm, I'm so excited uh, to speak the last message um, of the year uh, because I, I love this time of year. Because I think this is a perfect time for us to assess our 2018 and then put together a game plan for how we can move forward to... 2019. And the way that I I am able to do that is through the help of my counselor. Now, um, here is the reality. Some people think counseling is for people that have problems. Guess what? You're that person. And so so am I. And so what I love about my counselor is I I just kind of get to walk in and he's kind of got a a board in in his office and he says, come and and, and make yourself comfortable. And, And here's what I do. I write on his board what's going on in my brain. And then he speaks to the board. Now, here's what I've learned about good counselors. Good counselors don't just give great advice and have great answers. Really great counselors ask the best questions. And they ask you good enough questions that it allows you to process information when they're not there so that they don't become your God or or the thing that you're leaning on all the time. And my counselor gave me two questions this year that are going to help me move forward into the next year. And I just think that they're going to help you as well. And so I'm going to kind of use use the board and I'm not a licensed counselor, but um, but today's message is called Breaking Bad. Okay. now the reason that it's that is because I want us to look at 2018 and, and, and put together this game plan for 2019 and figure out what are some things that we can do to to have the best possible year in 2019. Now here, here are the questions that my counselor asked me. The first one is this, what's been the greatest point of tension in your life over the last month? What's been the greatest point of tension? So the question I want to ask you this weekend is what's been the greatest point of tension in your life over the last year? What's it been? What, what, what has been the thing that's kept you up at night? What's the thing that you keep circling around? You're going, why haven't I gotten over this issue? Now, here is the second question, and I really, really like this question. The second question that he asked me is this. What have other people seen as a concern in your life? Now, the reason he's asking this question is to see if you are self-aware or not, or if you are paying attention to what other people are saying. Sometimes when we have 10 people tell us something, we think they're crazy, and we're like, you're, you're an idiot, you don't know what you're talking about, what it was like, but 
a counselor's going, hey, ma'am, what if they're not crazy? Like, like you, you think you're a great leader, but everybody that follows you says you're not a great leader. You're like, no, they're just bad followers. Are we sure? Like, like, we, like maybe there is some credibility in what other people are saying. And so really, the question he's really asking me is, what does your wife see as a concern that you don't agree with? And I'm going, this is a great place to start. This is why I'm on the couch and you're helping me. And so, uh, so here, here is, a, for some of you, the answers to both of those questions will be separate. But for me, the answer to both of those questions are the same. And and the greatest point of tension in my life and the thing that other people see as a concern is my schedule. When I talk about my schedule, it stresses other people out. I'm like, I'm not stressed by my schedule. For example, in October, I spoke 29 times. People go, oh my gosh, how did you, you spoke 29 times? Listen, you might work 40 hours a week, that month, technically, I worked 29 hours. I'm doing okay. Like, like, I enjoy my schedule, but they're like, the flights and the hotels, like how, and the writing, I'm just like, I, I enjoy it, but it does come at a cost. Four nights ago, I had a dream uh, that I ran two red lights. And I remember in the dream getting through it and went, whoo, I'm still alive. This is great, okay? And, and then I woke up, and I just, I felt in my spirit this, this, this thought, Ryan, how many warning signs are you going to continue to ignore? Because you may have made it through twice, but will you make it through a third time? And why risk it? Are you paying attention to the warning signs? Two days ago, I got pulled over (laughs) by the police. (laughs) And he said, sir, we caught you going a certain mile per hour that is none of your business, okay? (laughs) And, and, he, and he said, hey, I, I'm, where are you headed? I said, man, I'm headed to the gym. This is a good thing for society. And he said, hey, man, I'm going to give you a warning. And he, he printed off a warning and made me sign it. It's like everything in my life has been pointing towards this to slow down. And when am I going to really start paying attention? And so the conversation in my household with, between me and my wife right now is going, okay, can we really look at my schedule and go, not is it good for me, but is it good for also the people that I love the most? I, I get an opportunity to, to do corporate coaching and executive coaching, and I was doing a session uh, with an organization last week, and, and I asked a bunch of executives, I said, hey, I got a question for you guys. When was the last time you took a day off? And they all started laughing because our culture celebrates people that work 80 hours a week. Man, they work hard. They're building the business. This is awesome. And I said, well, what's so funny? They're like, we don't, we don't take days off. I said, well, what do you do, like, for self-care to, like, distress? They're like, what, what, what's that? You know, and I'm like, can I be honest with all of you? Something is going to suffer at the pace that you're going. We all have to slow down. Now, for you, the tension in your life this year could be something completely different. The thing that other people see as a concern might be completely different. Now, for some of you, it's spiritual growth. And your, your year has simply consisted of just coming to church, but you've kind of plateaued spiritually. You want to go deeper, but it's just like, ah. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to make time for God. I, I, I do enough. I give enough. I serve a little bit. It, but it, it's a tension that keeps bothering you. For some of you, um, it's uh, relationships. And you, you got so much baby mama drama. Like, it, it, it just drives you crazy. And, and you've got this friend that you used to be friends with. And you guys, like, broke up this year. And for some of you, you think you've had a bad year relationally just because of Christmas. It stressed you out so much. You've got an in-law issue. You've got a spouse issue. You've got a parent issue. There, there are so many things that are going on relationally with you that it is the greatest tension in your life, and perhaps you've got friends that see the concern and go, dude, you're not being a really great friend, and you want to figure out a way uh, to break bad, and for some of us, uh, the greatest tension that exists in our life is finances. 
You're, you're one student loan notification in your email away from a complete depression. Like this is a thing that just keeps bothering you. You just can't get over the hill. And when you think about this year, you also think about loss. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you, you lost a friend. Like there, there's something in you that that has sort of marked your year. And, and for some of us, um, it, it's not just spiritual growth. It's not just relationships. It's not just finances. For some of us, it's physical health. And if we're honest, we don't like the way we look. And when we look in the mirror, we have this great feeling of just not feeling good enough. And we want to eat healthier. We want to do some things. But we just, when we look at our year, we, we don't count it as a W in this column. And perhaps the greatest tension for your year hasn't just been physical health. For some of you, it's mental health. And the amount of anxiety and the amount of depression that you've had to deal with this year has gotten to a point where it's insurmountable. And the more you hear other people talk about it, it might give you a little bit of courage to talk about it yourself. But these are the tensions. And for some of the people in your life that love you the most, they can see something's not right. And you're trying to figure out a way to break back. Here, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. It might be your first time in church. Maybe you came for Christmas and you said, man, I want to kind of start this new thing of, of going to church. You might not be a church person at all. I want you to know something. Regardless of the type of year that you had, the good news for you today is this. We serve a God of new beginnings. And we serve a God of turnarounds and comebacks. And so if you need fresh faith today, if you don't think that 2019 is going to be the best year of your life, I will loan you my faith for the next 30 minutes. Because I just believe the best is yet to come. And so here's what I want to do today. I want to give you five thoughts, five verses, and five resolutions, one for each one of these areas. And here's what I believe. If you will just apply three of the five, okay? You ain't got to do all five, okay? I realize that's a lot for all of us, okay? But if you will apply at least three of the five of these things in your next year, I promise you it will change your life. So on this first one, here's what I want you to start doing in, in 2019. We're going to pick up pink and we're going to go into the counseling session here, okay? Here's what I want you to start doing in 2019, okay? Start saying no, okay? Now, I had to spell it out for some of you because you don't like using it and you don't even like looking at it, okay? So um, a lot of us have a hard time Saying no, so I just want us to practice together right now, okay? So at every location, okay, I want us to say no on the count of three, okay? One, two, three. No. Now, some of you didn't do that because you're like, I'm not, you ain't gonna make me say no. I like your spirit. That's exactly what I need you to do with your schedule, okay? Like, I need you to, nah, uh, uh Because we all fall for this pressure, and Doug did such a great job talking about falling for this trap, this sickness of busyness a few weeks ago. If you didn't listen to that message, I challenge you to go back and listen to it. But it, it's this idea that the only way that we are going to grow in our relationship with God is if we spend more time with him. And guess what? They're not adding hours to our day. You are going to have to say no to something and start saying yes to God. One of the easy ways to do that is uh, even serving here at the church. Now you've put it on your schedule. I got to be somewhere for a certain amount of hours doing something that I wouldn't naturally do, serving other people. I promise you, if you've never done that, 2019 will be the best year for you to spiritually grow. And another way that you're going to do that is simply making time in your calendar to spend time with the Lord. But it's going to have to start saying no to something because we all feel like there's a bunch of stuff that we have to do that we really don't. Who, who's, who's pulling the strings in your life? Who's making you be at all these parties and do all of this stuff? Yeah, I love saying no. It, it's, it's gotten fun for me. Like, hey, Ryan, what are we doing for New Year's? Nothing. I'm going to bed at 10 p.m. and I'm going to enjoy my sleep. Like, it's going to be, I'll be like, come on, man, we want to do something. I'm like, no. My wife's pregnant. We're probably just going to Netflix into the night, into the New Year. It's going to be great. You know, like, we're just, like, Saying no, it's going to free you up, and we've got to get past this, man. We're going to disappoint other people. In fact, we should start being people that give grace to people that tell us no. You're not coming to my birthday party? No, I can't make, you know what? You don't got to give me the reasons why you can't go. Man, you're saying no. I'm just going to trust that you're creating space 
for what you need to create space for, and I'm not going to be offended that you chose my birthday party not to go to. <laughs> but send me a gift, though. Send me a gift. I don't need you to be, I don't need your presents. I need your present. Come on. Now, <laughs> but we got to start saying no. Uh, here's an invitation that Jesus gave to his literal disciples in Mark chapter 6. He says this. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. He said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Man, my hope and prayer for each and every person under the sound of my voice is that in 2019, you would accept that invitation from a savior that died for you. That you would get away from the busyness and get to a quiet place and find some rest for your soul. This second area of relationships, here's, here's what I want you uh, to do. And this is, this is, this is going to be hard for you to do, but I, I want you to outdo one another in showing honor. Now, here is what Paul wrote uh, to Christians in Rome. He said this, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Okay, let's pretend there is no Bible and you get one verse to live by. If you only lived by this verse alone, you would be one of the best humans on the planet because you're simply always trying to outdo the other person and showing honor. Can you imagine a married couple that this is the only marriage advice that they have? We're just going to try and outdo one another and showing love. They'll be fighting about stuff. You're like, why y'all fighting about who's going to do the dishes? No, I am going to do the dishes. No, 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 no. Who you think you are? I'm going to do the dishes. No, 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 no. You're going to let me change these diapers today. No, 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 no. I changed the diapers in this house. I know I just got home from a really long day, but I realized that you might have had one too, so I want to outdo you in showing honor, and you're going back and forth, and your kids are like, what is wrong with you? Stay out of this right now, okay? We're trying to outdo one another in showing honor. And some of you got in a fight on the way to church. And the best way for you to outdo the other one in showing honor is for you to get back in the car and be the first one to apologize. And I know you think you didn't do anything wrong. And you will say it's 90% their fault. Go first. Outdo the other one in showing honor and apologize for your 10%. I promise you, two people that are trying to outdo one another in showing honor, it's going to be really hard for them to get divorced. And for those of us in the room that have experienced the pain of a divorce, you know it came from some dishonor on some place or another. You should print off this scripture and hang it up in your house and say, this is how we're going to live. You, you should print it off and put it at your desk. And you say, you know what? At my job, I'm going to outdo every No one's going to honor people better than me at my job. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm getting coffee for everybody. You ain't going to get more coffees than me. You ain't going to get more lattes than me. That's right. And I know we're competing for sales. Guess what? I'm going to help you with your sales. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? What do you mean you're going to help? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to help you with your sales. Well, how in the world am I supposed to get ahead if I'm helping other people with their sales? Here's what's going to happen. Uh, and it might take you a long time to figure this out. But the best way to get ahead is not to push people out of the way. The best way to get ahead is to put others first because here's what's going to happen. You're going to help so many people get sales that management's going to see you and go, we need to give you a raise because here's what we figured out. Everybody that's around you keeps winning. So you know what? We should make you in charge. We should make you the executive because you have a way of rallying people because you're constantly putting other people first. The person that you no longer are friends with, something happened where you did not honor one another. What would it look like for you in 2019 for every relationship that you have to say, you know what? I got a new mantra in life. This is my New Year's resolution. I'm just going to outdo everybody I know and show an honor. No, no, I got the check. No, 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 no. I got the check. The waiter's like, can you guys get it together? Listen, we got an honor competition going on right now and he's about to lose. Like, you, you should just start being this person that just says, I, I'm going to outdo you. And you got to start asking yourself, who wouldn't want to be friends with that person? And who wouldn't want to stay married to that person that's simply always trying to out-honor the other person? This area of finances, here's what I want you to do. I want you to have generosity goals, okay? I want you to have generosity goals. Now, most of us live in a world where we have income goals. 
We'd like to make a certain number of money. Ah, I'd like to make six figures. I'd like to make a million dollars. But um, here is, is what um, they said about Jesus in the book of Acts where the first century Christians are, are doing all of, 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 of the ministry of following Jesus. They're fresh off it. And here's what they said. It says, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than receive. Here's why that's true. You tell me what you think sounds better. Hey, hey, y'all, I just want to let you know I make six figures. Hey, y'all, I'm just playing. I give six figures. Which one would you rather have? Be a person that gives that much or makes that much? Do the math. For you to give that much, you're going to have to make a little bit more. <laughs> but if you have generosity goals where you just say, you know what? I want to be a giver. Here's what I just believe is a kingdom principle. This is not the prosperity gospel. This is what I like to call the generosity gospel. I promise you, when you begin to have generosity goals, God will continue to resource you to fulfill those goals. So here's a challenge I'm going to give. Give the entire church. Okay, this is what I want you to do. I want your generosity goal. This is the start. Okay, we're just going to start. Okay, now we're talking about generosity. I want you to start. And, and this, is, this is something you can give away to something that breaks your heart. You get to church. I want you to give away what you pay Netflix a year. Okay, now if you got the 4K membership, half of y'all using your cousin's login anyways. But for the half of you that have your own Netflix, okay, you pay for it. Comes out of your account. Okay, it's $13.99 for the 4K. You might have a $7.99 one, but the $13.99, the best one, the top one. Okay, that's $167 and 88 cents. I want you to give away $167.88 next year, okay? Something that breaks your heart. I don't care if you go get McDonald's gift cards and start giving it out to homeless people. You can go to McDonald's and say, I need $167.88 worth of gift cards because I'm feeding the homeless this year, okay? And you might have to give up Netflix to do that. But here's what I believe. I believe this about every single person under the sound of my voice. God will pay you back. I, I, I fully believe and can guarantee you God will pay you back. That some way, somehow, it will come full circle for you that you get an extra $167.88. And here's the deal. If you decide to give up Netflix, which you won't, but let's just say you did, okay? If you give up, if you give $167.88 next year and it doesn't come back to you full circle, I will pay you back, okay? So you're going to get it back one way or another. So when I come back next year, I want you to see me like, hey, I gave away $167.88 and nothing happened. Here you go. This is only going to happen to like two of you, so I'm not like really worried right now, okay? So, but it, it's the principle of saying, you know what? Man, I've got generosity to go. Because a lot of us in our, our, on our prayer list, we have things that we want, things that we desire, things that we want to, to get on our to-get list. What if you went to God with a giving list? I said, God, there's an organization that breaks my heart, and I wish I could help them more. But I live paycheck to paycheck right now, and it's the greatest tension in my life. But, Lord, would you put me in a position to bless that organization? Please tell me, when you heard Eric talking about bikes and, and allowing pastors to spread the gospel all around the world, like, tell me something in you didn't say, I wish I could do 10 bikes. I wish I could do 100 bikes. Make it your goal to do one. Make it your goal to do two. Make it your goal to do five. Wh whatever level you're at, you sit with your family, your spouse, your friends, and say, man, what can we do together to have generosity goals? Man, I, I want to have giving goals, not just income. Income goals, that's too small of thinking. And maybe that was okay for 2018, but my prayer for you in 2019, oh, is that you would have generosity goals and that all of a sudden you would start to see a whole new side of life, one where it's better to give. They receive. Uh, as it pertains to, to physical health, what I want you to do is I want you to share, share your physical health goals with an accountability partner. I want you to tell somebody. And, and here's why this is important. Um, Y'all know, like, as a culture, we love food way too much. We love fast food. We love slow food. We love, we, we, we love dessert. We, we just... We're just not as strong as we'd like to be. We're not as disciplined as we'd like to be. And so it's, it's important that when you, you tell people that spend a lot of time with you what your goals are, because then they can help you be uh, accountable. Um, I love what Solomon, uh, one of the richest men and wisest men to ever live, he wrote this in Ecclesiastes. He said, two 
are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you should have someone alongside you that's saying, hey, I'm in this fight with you. I'm, I hope you are not trying to accomplish your goals on your own. I hope that you're the type of friend that goes to other people and says, hey, man, can I help you with your goals? Here's a great exercise that each of us can do today, this weekend. You should text the five people closest to you and say, hey, what can I be praying for for your next year? Like, what, what is it that you're hoping to accomplish next year that I can be praying for? And is there anything I can do to help? Is there anything that I can do to help you with your goals? Because when we're sharing it, when we're doing it as a community, it just makes it a whole lot more possible. Now, for those of you who, who've never heard me speak, you've never heard me talk uh, about the opportunity I had to do a documentary called Chasing Failure, where I tried out for an NBA team, and, and spoiler alert, I failed, which is why I'm standing here right now. And so, um, so I, I'll, I'll talk about failure a lot and help people get past it and get past rejection and, and all that. But what people don't know is that um, I told so many people that I was trying out for an NBA team that it made future conversations embarrassing when I hadn't done it yet. So in other words, I go, hey, guys, guess what? I'm doing this thing called Chasing Failure. Now I'm going to try for an NBA team. I don't have an NBA team yet, but I will eventually. They're like, man, that's awesome. Three months later, they see me. They're like, hey, how's that uh, NBA thing going? I'm like, see, what had happened was, man, listen, I got busy, and, and, uh, but I'm working on it. But it put a good type of pressure on me to get my stuff together to say, Dude, I've got to figure this out to continue to be a person of my word. And I, I don't have an agent, I don't have, but I'm going to have to get creative in figuring this thing out. I told enough people about it that it would make it embarrassing if I didn't do it. You, man, when I tell people about my physical health goals, it, I'll order a piece of that. Like, uh, 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 what you doing? What you doing? That looks like a cheat meal to me. Is this one of your cheat meals for the week? Yes, okay, it's one of my cheat meals. It might be an extra cheat meal, but I just don't need you to be judging me right now, okay? <laughs> Next year, we're going to start fresh. Okay, so um, ultimately, you, you want to be able to share these things with, with, with everybody, okay? Um, this last part, for my friends in the room who have struggled with mental health, I, I want you to be more vulnerable, we uh, live in a world where there is a constant pressure on us to do two things, to be happy and to be smart. To look happy and to look smart. And I wonder how many people are listening to this message, they're watching this message, they're in the room today at in 2018 was characterized by the smile you constantly had to put on your face for other people so no one would know what you're really dealing with. And what I want to encourage you to do in 2019 is to be the most authentic you. It's to be the real you. And can I let you know, it's okay to struggle with this. It's okay to not look smart. It's okay to, to not look happy. One of, the, one of the talks that I do with, with, in executive coaching is it's a message just called, I don't know. And I teach leaders to use those words more often. And they're like, you want us to say, I don't know? I'm like, well, you really don't. So <laughs> why not just tell them the truth? They know you don't know. They know when you're making stuff up. So you might as well lead with vulnerability and they'll actually respect you more for being honest. And what if you started saying, I don't know, but I'm going to figure it out. Listen, I don't know it's going to free somebody up in 2019 because some people bring you problems that aren't yours to solve anyways. I love telling people I don't know. Oh, it feels good. It feels real good. One dude came to me the other day, and he said, Ryan, I need you to fix this guy's problems in 30 seconds. You're awesome. you got a lot of smart stuff to say. Let me tell you a situation. Okay, his wife left him, took six kids, took all the money. He's depressed. What do I say to him? Go. I don't know. He said, what do you mean you don't know? Like, you, you always have something to say. I'm like, yeah, you, you left out a lot of details. I, I got more questions than, than, than anything. I said, but here's what I will tell you. You're his friend. And you know what I think he needs? I think he needs a friend to just sit with him, not fix his problem. So I don't have advice for him. I have advice for you. 
Go sit with your friend in the dark. Because some of us and some of our friends, they're going through a really, really dark time. And sometimes we're so quick to turn on the lights. They don't need their problems fixed. Some of our friends just need somebody to sit with them long enough to just go, I'm going to sit with you, man. And I'm not going to let you go through this by yourself. I, I love what James 5, 16 says. It says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. What you struggle with mentally is not a sin. But what the brother, the half-brother of Jesus is trying to tell us is that there is power in confessing something to one another. Man, I love his instructions next. He doesn't just, he, he talks to the confessor and the confessee. He didn't say confess to one another and then counsel them into healing. Because we all want to be everybody's counselor. You ain't no counselor. Unless you're an actual counselor, we respect what you do. You do great work. But for the rest of us, <laughs> you just need to be a great friend and wear that hat and go, you know what? I, I don't got to turn on the lights so fast. Job is known um, in scripture as a, a person that went through the worst life ever. Okay. And, and here's how the story of, of Job goes in, in history. It says in Job chapter two, verse 11 says, when Job's three friends... Eliphaz, the Terminite, the Termite. Listen, it's three awesome people. I don't feel like embarrassing myself using these big words, but three awesome people heard about all the troubles that had come upon him. They set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. When you're vulnerable with other people, people you love, and you say, hey, this is what I'm going through, really fighting depression. I'm really fighting anxiety. What you risk is vulnerable. What you, you're, you're risking getting rejected by them. Now let me tell you something. On the other side of that rejection, that, ver that may very well happen. I don't know who your people are. All right? They might be nice. They might not be. But on the other side of that rejection, two things. Number one, at least they're now rejecting the real you instead of accepting who you've been pretending to be for a long time. And now what you've done is you position yourself for number two, for them to actually love you just as you are and to sit with you in the dark and to say, you're not fighting this alone. And maybe as a good friend, you don't try to fix them. Maybe you like a counselor, you ask really good questions. Perhaps a great question for someone that is struggling with anxiety and struggling with depression. Maybe, maybe a great question. Maybe a great place to start. Could be. How long? How long has it been? How long have you been fighting this battle alone? Not anymore. I'm with you. I'm with you. And here's what I would encourage you to do if you find yourself in a dark place. Take notes in the dark. Take notes in the dark because when the lights do come on and on the other side of you winning, you're going to be able to help somebody else that's sitting in the dark too. You're going to say, hey, man, I, I took notes on what I went through and, and perhaps here's a blueprint that might help you, but don't rush the process. But hey, man, I've been where you've been and this is what I know. Everything's going to be all right. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you've got a shot at having the best year ever. I hope that today you've got some questions that can help you assess what your year was like and what you would like to improve on to break bad. Here's what I know. When you start saying no and start making room for Jesus in your life, it's a game changer. And you're going to find yourself growing more than you ever have. When you decide to be the person that wins the honor championship for 2019 and you start saying, you know what? I'm going to out honor every single person I know. Man, you're, everybody's going to want to be your friend. And guess what? Somebody's going to want to marry you or somebody's going to want to stay married to you because you just, keep, you just keep outdoing them in honor. You keep being the first one to apologize. You keep being the first one to appreciate. You just keep being the first one because you're going, you know what? I can't control what other people do, but I can't control who 
I am. And, and we're going to start sharing what we're trying to accomplish because we're not going to start trying to accomplish goals on our own, but we're going to start living life in community. And, and then I think for some of my friends, you're going to start being honest. You're going to take off a mask. You're going to start being the real you, and you're going to give the people that you love the most an opportunity to love you right where you're at. You're going to take really great notes because a year from now, man, you're going to find yourself in a whole new position. And I just, and what I'm excited about the most is all of us walking out of here trying to figure out how we're going to give away $167.88. It's a challenge. I just trust God to figure out ways to give you $167.88 over the next 365 days. It's so cool. I, I can't wait because God's going to start putting stuff on your heart now that you have a generosity goal. Who wouldn't want to be friends with this type of person? Oh, man, I think you're going to have the best year of your life. With every head bowed and every eye closed at every location, I want to give uh, each and every person an opportunity to really have the best way to have a fresh start in 2019. And the best way to do that is to surrender your life to Jesus. What better way to start the year to say, you know, I'm going to start this year off right, man. I'm going to, I don't want to be in control of my own life. Man, if that's you today, maybe, maybe, maybe you've just walked away from the faith for a little bit and you want to rededicate your life to Christ. Man, I think that would be awesome. I mean, welcome home. It's time to come home. Whether it's your first time surrendering your life to Christ or your second or third time, it doesn't matter what time it is. I know it is the perfect time right now. If that's you at each and every one of the locations, I just want you to lift up your hand right now and say, Ryan, that's me. That's me. That's me. I see your hand back there. Is there anybody else? I see your hand. I see your hand. That's awesome. Is there anybody else? Hands all over every location. That's awesome. Can we all say this prayer together? Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. I ask now that you would be the Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender my dreams, my future, and my year to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Come on, can we make some noise at every location for every person that gave their life to Christ? Best decision you've ever made. Why don't you stand to your feet? We're going to worship a little bit. As we, uh, as we get ready to, to uh, go into to worship, uh, this is our, our, our last service for the year. It's a way, great way to close it, a, a great way to say, Lord, this is whatever kind of year I had. I want to leave all that behind, and I want to start fresh, and, and I want to build my life on the foundation of who you are. This is what I want my life to be, be about. So as we sing songs, uh, at, at every location, I just, my hope and prayer for each and every one of you is that you would be able to step into everything that God has for you in this next year. Father, I thank you so much for Red Rocks Church. I pray, God, that my friends in the room would literally have the best year ever, regardless of what they're stepping out of, Lord. I pray that they would get a grand focus on what they're stepping into. Lord, give them favor. Lord, give them divine appointments. Lord, give them generosity goals that are crazy, Lord, and I pray that you would exceed their expectations. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Everybody said, amen. amen.